Okay guys, um, in this video we're going to start the first of the checks with the Virago and we're basically checking this little fellow right here. This is the fuel pump right here and the fuel inlet to the carburetors there and the outlet from the tank which sits right here in between the frame members. This of course on the original Virago being a dummy tank on the later 95 plus model Virago like this one is an actual metal real tank with a very small capacity because of the curvature because the airbox is right underneath there so there's not actually much in there at all and it really didn't add much to what was under there it just makes filling it up easier but that's by the way you can hear you can um, hear about all that on my Virago review on the Virago that I had and um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the fuel feed off the carburetors here and I'm going to turn on the ignition and start uh, the pump cranking away into this jug and what happens when um, when everything's cranking over is it will pump fuel in until it feels resistance and it feeds back which tells it to stop pumping there's enough fuel in the carbs and then when they start to empty it'll pump back in again because it's not getting any resistance it's just going to be pumping continuously it's going to continue pumping into here this is an old knackered plastic measuring jug that I use exactly for such things for draining of oil, draining of fuel and so on and it has the handy added feature of having measure ingredients on the side so we can actually see how much fuel this is pumping out now as I stated in the previous video incorrectly I might add but obviously added the little scrolling doodad at the bottom the marked output of the Virago fuel pump is 50 to 60 litres per hour not minutes so what we need to do is a few little calculations to figure out how much fuel it should be pumping out in 30 seconds which is a reasonable sort of expected figure you could go for a minute but uh, 30 seconds to hold a tube in here and see what it's pumping out and we'll do that on, uh, on average a couple of times and then what I will do depending on the results of here if this is not looking positive um, is I will unplug the power feed which is up here which is a simple two pin connector to the fuel pump and just apply 12 volts DC directly to that so it will just pump, it will basically just go at its full rate regardless and we'll see what that puts out so we're here straight away with the pipe I've just pulled off and, uh, and this here just to catch the residual as I've pulled it out of this little holding clip here so that I can hold it down and uh, control it a little bit easier as to where it's pouring and um, initial appearances are not good that's pretty manky looking fuel in there which is suggesting some crud in the fuel tank so um, ideally it's really looking like uh, the fuel tank is going to need whipping off and giving a good clean out at this stage uh, we'll see what it looks like when I start pumping it out a bit more but anyway uh, here goes so essentially what we're doing here is holding this in place here and then just turning on the pump this a little bit of a wipe out and I'm going to stop right there and I think we can safely say at this stage that uh, no further testing is necessary. So at that we have less than 50 millilitres of fuel pumped in there during 10 seconds of cranking. I mean there's literally nothing coming out. This, this little bit here was what came out uh, just by switching on the ignition and the, and the pump priming itself. Um, now 
based on 50 litres an hour, so we're being generous. 50 litres an hour divided by 60 minutes in an hour obviously equates to 0.83 litres per minute. So that's almost a litre a minute. This, this is what the, the pump should be capable of, of pumping out. Okay, um, so 0.83 litres a minute. So divide that by 6. We should be looking at 138, 0.138 litres, 138 millilitres uh, per 10 seconds. So that should have been at least up there. Uh, I'm going to have another go but essentially what I would what I would do is uh, based on a 30 seconds so I'm going to crank it for 30 seconds and what we should be seeing is about 400 millilitres minimum absolute minimum for 30 seconds of cranking and pumping at the pump. I'm going to set the timer for 30 seconds And I'm going to leave that in because I know roughly how much is in there. And there's the pump primed. So we've got about 50 mil in there, maybe. If that, I'm going to start that and start cranking. is pretty much coughed its last. Shut up, shut up, shut up. Okay, as we can hear there, the battery's pretty much coughed its last, uh, or despite it being on charge for a day or so. Um, and the fuel coming out of it doesn't actually look that bad. It's just that first bit that looked really kind of nasty and khaki. Uh, that doesn't look too bad. It's relatively clean. There's a few tiny little flakes at the bottom, but nothing that I would personally worry about. Uh, small enough to, to sort of get through a carbon, get through the jets, the pilot and the main. Uh, we're talking like little dust particles really, you know. Um, but that's certainly indicative of a knackered pump. So for starters, we've got a problem with the pump. So obviously what's happening, what's been happening while the thing has been riding this, has been, uh, has been starting it up, it's been priming uh, what little bit of what little juice it can get into the carburetors enough to fire it up get down the road And then as it started to open up the throttle and it's demanded a little bit more oomph It's frankly it's just getting choked and there's nothing there to feed it So the first thing we need to do is look at replacing this pump. I will test it um, I'm not going to bother messing around setting everything up on video But I will test it with a direct 12 volt feed just to rule out the possibility that it's wiring related on the bike but I'm pretty confident that that is what we call, in the trade, knackered. So the next step, regardless, is still going to be to take the carbs off, strip them, give them a good clean, check them anyway. I switched the camera off and I thought, oh, what the heck, I'll, um, I'll plug it into a 12 volt supply and I'll do a little bit of testing and we'll see what happens. And, uh, and I gave it a couple of shots and we got the bar and uh, same kind of result dribbling out nothing nothing really to call anything and then all of a sudden uh, i don't know how well is you're going to be able to see this but let's hope him let's try and get this to focus in close um i don't know if you can see that but we've got a nice little scorch mark on my fingertips oh yeah uh and this is a result of the good old uh Wedge a paper clip in the thing and connect it to a battery thing, and um, and I don't know if you can see on that, but you've got a nice shiny paper clip bit, and then you've got the sort of scorched paper clip bit, and that is what happens when your contact points weld themselves together on the pump. And um, for those that don't know, an electric pump, a simple electric pump like this. 
basically uses a make and break contact breaker circuit. Uh, for those of you that remember points ignition, uh, it's kind of like that. I'm going to zoom in and let you just have a look at this. Now this is the pump with the lid off. Hopefully you'll be able to see this quite clearly. And what you can see here, let me just get a screwdriver so I can kind of move that for you. What you can see here is a little make and break contact breaker system just like you would have in a points ignition. And this is the bit that goes Duh! and it's switching on and off at, uh, at uh, several times a second and operating a diaphragm inside which is going and pulling fuel from the tank and pushing it through the other pipe. So it's pulling it down this pulling it down this pipe, pushing it out of this one. Alrighty, let me zoom back out. So what I'm going to do just for the moment is dress that up, uh, give it a recheck, um, but I think we can safely assume that that's shot. So it's it's useless, it's uh, it's past its best. And I'm actually glad that I tested that the way I did because th that was obviously going to go at some point anyway. And it's better testing it and, and sort of seeing that now than leaving it on the bike and, uh, and carrying on more tests on the bike just to see it sort of smouldering away nicely under that panel. So we're giving the points a bit of a clean up. Uh, I've just sort of dressed them with some, uh, some wet and dry because I can't find my points file. Um, this is something I've not used in years to be frank. So uh, it's, it's in a toolbox somewhere, I'm not sure where. But I've given them a little bit of a dress up, taken the charred edges off them. So hopefully uh, that should get it spinning. And uh, we're just going to have a quick look and see if it's made any difference at all. That'd be a no. Yeah, you can hear that ticking away. Uh, clearly, it's really not doing its thing at all. Uh, obviously, uh, it's got a little bit scorched there with uh, the points gluing themselves together uh, with the heat. So there's really not much else I can do with that. Uh, we've got what we've got to do um, to move forward with this is look at replacing that fuel pump. Um, but in the meantime, I can be taking off the carburetors and taking a look at those. Okay, so thanks for watching so far and uh, and check back to see what happens next. Right, so thanks for watching so far and check back for more videos. Thanks.